Hi guys, this is vsantiago113. In this video, I want to show you how to use Robocopy, uh, at least a few tips. Robocopy is a command line tool made by Microsoft and it's one of the best out there uh, for backups. Uh, it, it backups all the data, it backups the attributes, it backups all the permissions, you can synchronize directories, you can just move things around, especially for migrations. And it's, uh, I just I love Robocopy, I've been using it for years. And the first thing you want to do to download Robocopy, uh, Robo Interface. Robo Interface is a user interface for Robocopy. It makes it makes things easier to to use uh, to use Robocopy, and it helps you too with the job files and everything. So check on the link in the description for to download Robo Interface. And after you uh, come here to search for, after you click on that link, it's going to take you here to download a uh, Robo Interface. And it's going to download this executable. This is an archive executable. And this archive executable, I made it using WinRAR. And what it does is, is it just asks you where you want to uh, extract everything, all the, the files. And in this case, I, I said I wanted to go into the desktop. And it's going to extract everything in this uh, raw interface version 1.0 uh, folder. And over here, uh, you got all, all of the files. Uh, this Iron Python DLL means this application was developed using Iron Python on Python programming language on that net. Now all of that was possible using this software called Sharp Developed. This is uh, is open source and this is that net and it actually the, the 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 GUI designer works perfectly for Python. And so here you have a job files. I have three job files that I created with Robocopy to share with you guys. I use these ones on my job when I do migration or I want to keep keep different directories in synchronization or I just want to fix permissions from an attribute from a an old uh, you know folder that I have with a bunch of files after I did the migration and I want to make sure all the permissions are transferred over and here we're gonna go and we're going to open Robocopy but this is important because you're using this to create backups of files, you want to make sure you run Robo Interface as administrator. If not, then you might get some access denied on some of the files that you want to transfer. You know, the, it depends on also the switches that you select. So here you have three tabs. You have a, a, a all of the basic options that are the most commonly used. You got the other more advanced options, and you have a jobs table. Jobs table is when you create a job. Uh, File is going to go in here. You have uh, this for the to select the source and the destination. So the first thing you want to use to go on Robocop is that you want to know what you're backing up. In my case, I have a source folder with some uh, videos, and I want to make a copy of that everything I put on this source. I want to make a copy here on this destination. And how I'm going to do this is well, the first thing I want to do is uh, well, let me show you real quick. So here you have all of these switches. So every time you click on a switch here on the label, it's going to show you here a description of what it is. For example, if you click on this copy flag, it's going to show you uh, what the, the switch does and this uh, forward slash sec. You can also click over here on file attributes and it's going to show you all the attributes. Or you click on copy flags information, it's going to show you all the copy flags. So you just click on the label and it's going to give you a description of what it is. If you don't select anything or you want to click everything, you just click new. For example, if you have some options, let me show you. And you click over here, you click on file, go on new, and it resets everything back to default. If you don't have anything here and you just click run CMD, it's going to open the command prompt uh, with the help switch. And the only one that I'm missing here is this forward slash Unicode, output status as Unicode. If you want this one to be added, just put it in the comments below, send me an email or open, it, or open a ticket on search for it. So here, uh, the first thing you want to do, let me see what else I can show you here. Well, is uh, let's, let's select the source. For example, over here I'm selecting the source. Here I'm selecting the destination where I want my backup to go. I wanted to go to this destination folder. Make sure this is the right uh, source and the right destination. What happened with, with Robocopy is uh, 
as Robocopy also gives you message is that it can delete files as same as it can back up files for example if you're using a mirror switch the mirror switch what it does is it mirror both directories it's making sure that everything that is on a source is exactly the same that is on the destination and because the mirror switch use porch Porsche means that it's going to, to delete everything that is on the destination that does not exist in the source. So this is why this is important. So if you want to mirror, this is what you want to do. You want to, um, you want to click mirror. If you don't want to mirror anything, you just want to copy whatever you have on the source and just add it to the destination. Don't use the mirror switch. Go over here and just select copy all. Copy all is going to copy the data. It's going to copy the... Uh, let me go over here, copy flag, the data, attribute, timestamp, security, ownership, and outing. If you, if you don't want to copy everything, you can just go here and copy, just tell it what you want to copy. In this case, I want to select uh, the, the data, the attribute, timestamp, security, the ownership, and uh, I don't want to copy, maybe uh, let's copy the, uh, everything except the outing. So this is what you want to do in case you don't want to use mirror. So it won't delete stuff that doesn't exist on the source on the destination. So if you just want to synchronize, which is the switch that is most commonly used that I think, then you want to select the mirror. Let's click over here on new to make sure everything is back to default. So one of the things that I always use is the forward slash E switch. This one what it does is it includes uh, subdirectories that are empty that are on the source is going to also include those in the destination and something that I like to do is I like to copy uh, uh, this tree for ordering well this one it copy the uh, everything the data the attributes the security and here uh, which is out oh and the meter uh, I always use the meter to, to mirror everything from one directory to the other one very useful in case you want to do a migration now these two are important because this all depends w the errors you get on the on, on robocopy it depends how long it's gonna take by default robocopy tries 1 million times and, and by default it wastes 30 seconds so that's a long time so I always set this two to one and because I use a log file in this case you can have uh, just make sure you uh, well, you don't have to select it on a dual quote, it's going to add it for you. But let's say you have uh, a test log, test file, call, a file called test.log for your logs, and it's safe on a, on a C drive. If you if you don't select uh, any path, it's going to select uh, the current working directory, which would be this one. And now let's say you want to, to output everything you add to, you are sending to the all the output you're sending to the log file you also want it to go to the console what you want to do is this uh, forward slash tee -E, you want to set this to true what this does is send the output to the log file and also to the console window and here is the switches and one that is really important is this forward slash c this copies everything in restartable mode and what this does is if it's copying something over the network and there is a glitch and if, for example, you lose connection for, for, for one second. Now, it, instead of go back again, deleting the file and starting copying all over again, what it's going to do is it's going to wait and, it's, and when it has connection again, it's going to keep copying everything from where it left. So, so if it was copying a 10 megabyte uh, file and it only got to copy 8, then it's going to, to continue on 8 until it gets to 10 and uh, forward slash B this one is important for example like when you're doing migration on a network sometimes you have directories where not even the administrator have permissions because the owner of that folder or the object and the permissions are set to the owner for example would be a home a home directory for a specific user or a profile directory for a specific user where you don't have access to it because the owner is the user so if, if you have if you're the network administrator and you run this as administrator or or if you have backup operator permissions you can run this uh backup switch let's also run here the restartable switch 
and then what it's going to do is instead of giving you access denied to that folder it's just going to copy it you don't have access to it but it's going to be able to copy it so um, another thing that I like to do is I like to fix the permissions and I like to fix the timestamps so these are two that I like to do so for example over here too if you have encrypted files you can also use this one and it's going to copy them using EFS EFS, EFS is, a, is an encryption from Microsoft <clears throat> so here are two other two that are important is you can exclude files and directories if you want to exclude files you can have a, a dual quote I always tell everybody when you're doing stuff like this even if you're doing on that command prompt you want to get used to use double quotes and you want to put all of the path or the name of the file even if it's just one file with no uh, spaces you want to get used to use double quotes because for example if you're doing something on let's say program files and you don't have any double quotes it robocopy and, and even the command prompt is going to break because it blue is looking for this program call for this file I'm sorry for this folder called program which I spelled wrong for this uh, folder called program so if you have double quotes it's going to look for a, a directory I'm sorry it's going to look for a directory called program files so that's why you want to get used to this and then it's going to look for a file called test test that text and if you want to exclude another file let's say you want to find for any file that is called uh, test me that text and also you can you want to exclude uh, using a wildcard all the mp3 files that it finds so you can also use wildcards so if you click over here on the label it's going to show you over here and uh, the same thing goes with the directories uh, you can also exclude directories for example you can exclude uh, the Windows directory if you want to copy everything except the Windows directory uh, let's say you want to exclude uh, the directory users you can also do it this way uh, just leave a space and then another dual quotes and another directory inside <clears throat> and now these are the other two that I, I like to use and this is what I'm, I did on the jobs table so a job file what it is is a, a job file is, is just a like a configuration file. All of the all of the switches that you use are going to be saved on this job file that you can use at any time. So now I want to give you a tip when you're creating job files. When you're creating job files, you don't want to give it the the log file not yet, and you don't want to give it a source and a destination. Now, if you want to just build all of the switches that you normally use and also like for example like excluding files and directories you, you just want to make sure like well to create just a log file uh, you don't want I'm sorry to create only that job file you don't want to tell it what that source and the destination is this is just going to create a job file but it's not going to copy any data because what happens is if you want to use the same job file on another location and it does and it's not the same uh, path for example then then because if it's not the same path it's gonna break it's not gonna find it so if you just create a job file like I did here that I'm sharing this tree with you guys so I don't I don't select any log file and I didn't select any source of destination because if you want to use it all you have to do is add it over here and then just give it here the source and the destination and then that's how uh, you use it for example over here I have a uh, this one and I want to create a job file um, let me show you real quick let's uh, yeah, let's create a job file first you can go here on save job file uh, you can click browse and let's say click test click save and now you can copy this to the command prompt by clicking on this copy button over here right click and paste and it copy this command to to the clipboard if you say run cmd because I'm not running the search on the destination on the command it's going to just create the, the, the job file and if I go here on jobs table and I click refresh it's going to show the log file over here you can open the log file job file directory I'm sorry 
and I can see it over here. So now what if I want to use it? Well, you can click edit and modify. Well, what if I want to use it? All you have to do, for example, go here, click a new, select the source, select the destination, for example, over here, make sure they are correct source and destination. And what you want to do is you want to go over here, you want to open the job file that you just created for test, and you want to run it, just click on run CMD. And because yeah, it, it already has the log file because you already told it. So this is where it's going to save the log file. And this is why I, I never thought to to choose any log file because for example, it's creating my log file on the user's gamer desktop. But if I want to use this on a different computer and the user is a different name, this won't work. That's why you, you, don't, you don't want to use this right now. For example, you can delete it. And now you can go over here on advanced option, for example, on options, and you want to create a new one. And then select this option to true. And now you want to run it. So here is copying all of my videos to, to the destination. And this is using right now a log a job file. So there it goes and it finished. So uh, here it shows you a header where you only skip one that it says and let's go back. It's going over here. And here are all the videos and the videos can play. So the backup was successful. Uh, okay, you can close this. Let's click on uh, new. Reset everything back. And you can delete this one. I click. I created this right now for testing. Refresh. So now I have a three job files I did here for you guys to share with you guys. You guys can click on edit, see all the switches, make sure that everything is correct. And what you want to do, for example, on this one, you can use it for only do migrations. You can select this one to keep two directories synchronized, and you can click on this one to just copy permissions and attributes from one directory to another one. So now I'm going to make uh, another backup using one of these log files, job files, I'm sorry. So I want to select this one for migrations and I want to select the source, again the destination, make sure they are correct. I want to say uh, here I have a log file, this is a log file for the, our previous uh, backup that we did. I want to delete this one and I want to start over again. So I want to go here, select mimi.txt. It's going to be the new lo uh, log file. Set this to true because I want to see the output and I want to run it. And here, here is running uh, that job file that I already have created. So this is how you create job files, how you use them. Um, this is all the options. This is a robo interface. Uh, I hope you guys like like robo interface. Uh, make sure you check on the subscription to the link on where to download robo interface. Make sure you share the video, you like the video, and you are so subscribed. And this is everything for robo interface.